All right, let's talk about watches. You know, I got these two 44 millimeter uh, watches on the uh, the cushion here. Now, honestly, the Seiko Sumo is technically 44.88, so it's a little bigger than 44. And then the uh, lug to lug is over 50. And then you got a 44 here in the Citizen Grand Touring, but with a crown guard, probably plays more like a 47. So I'm kind of being sneaky. I'm being sneaky with the measurements, but still, these are sold as 44 millimeter watches on Amazon and eBay. So I'm I'm telling the truth. Uh, why am I looking at 44 millimeter watches today? Uh, well, you know, I I I have a history of wearing really big, oversized dinner plate watches, and I can remember. 2008, uh, walking uh, through the um, through the various sh watch stores in Las Vegas. 2008. You want to know what the craze was in 2008 in Las Vegas? U-boat. What U-boat is this um, this huge celebrity watch in 2008? It's probably 58 millimeters, 60. I don't know. Uh, I've read reviews that the loom's not that good. What a surprise! Kind of Invicta ash in that uh, regard. I don't know, what what's Invicta Esh? Sounds like you're making Hungarian goulash. In any event, uh, the oversized fad of 2008 has softened a bit. You can still get uh, oversized watches, uh, you know, 48 millimeters, 50, 52, they're, they're pretty common. You can find them in kiosks at shopping malls, but, but honestly, uh, what you really want is a watch that, that I would call a keeper. A keeper has uh, classic styling, but on the other hand, it's not too boring. And the size is masculine without making you try too hard. And for a lot of people, depending on wrist size, 44 millimeters is the sweet spot. And so I want to look at a couple of uh, 44 millimeter watches that I have. And we'll first look at the Seiko uh, Sumo. Uh, distinguished by uh, many because of its unique uh, cradle uh, case design and see that's 50 millimeters going north to south lug to lug and then it has your classic uh, diver cue uh, features on the front you know almost Rolex like in the front but then it has its own unique case here and so very this is a very beloved watch especially at this price point Oh, what are these now? Four hundred, four hundred and fifty dollars, something like that. Uh, is it a taboo to talk about pricing? I don't know. Some people won't talk about pricing. I'm going to talk about pricing. Uh, one of the things uh, about the Sumo is the loom is good. The movement, the six R one five movement, is very well known for its robustness, its accuracy, and listen to this: fifty hour power reserve. This is definitely an upgrade from the Seiko Monster in terms of the movement, uh, the 6R15 movement. Now I am six feet tall and see after my workout today I was 232 and this watch plays rather nice, rather large on me. It, I used to be scared of a watch that was 44 millimeters but the Sumo cured me of that. Now uh, here are some complaints you'll hear about the Sumo. People will say, McMahon, 20 millimeter bracelet lugs, way too small for a watch this size. I never had a problem with that. It's always been very comfortable uh, with those lugs. I've never had a problem with that at all. Uh, totally disagree with that. Here's another complaint I hear. McMahon, aluminum bezel insert. What, that's cheap. Uh, never had a problem with the aluminum bezel insert. Never felt cheap to me. Especially at this price point, I felt I was getting a lot of watch for my money. Here's another complaint I hear. McMahon, the bracelet rattles and feels cheap overall. Well, I agree with that point. This Seiko Sumo you're looking at does not have the stock bracelet. It has a strap code n mill, And I'm telling you, the bracelet has gotten more rattly and cheap uh, on the, uh, the Sumo over the years. And it doesn't matter though, I mean even if it had the older model bracelet, I, I just like it on the uh, on the end mill. Much more masculine looking, uh, much more toolish, more rugged, heavier, like it a lot more. Uh, definitely I uh, think this is an overall sweet time piece. 
It's a great, uh, great buy for a newbie at this price point. If you're new to watches, you want something distinctive, beautiful, robust, classic. Uh, sweet spot size. It's hard to find a watch at this price point that beats the Sumo and uh, I recommend the Sumo. I mean if you were gonna if you were starting with no watches uh, you would be well served to begin your collection with the uh, Seiko uh, Sumo. Very nice watch. Now let's look if you wanted a, a second watch to complement your Sumo, I'd, I'd recommend you stay in the 44 millimeter zone again. And here is the uh, the Citizen uh, Grand Touring. Let's see if I can let you see that thick sapphire crystal, which really gives it a dome, and then it magnifies the numerals underneath, and so it gives it a lot of wow factor, a lot of razzle dazzle. Uh, a lot of pop and so this is uh, a very nice citizen they're using their best movement the 9012 movement my watchmaker is is in high praise of the 9012 movement he says it's their best movement look at that sapphire it, that sapphire plays nice with the light I'm really liking the sapphire crystal oh yes look at the thickness they don't mess around now these watches are under 700 bucks I think you can find them on eBay for about 660 something like that. Brand new. The bracelets are exquisite. You don't touch this watch. You get it and you wear it as it is. It's not like the Sumo. Uh, this 9012 movement has a power reserve of 42 hours. As I said, it has a dome sapphire crystal. Really gives it a nice play on the wrist, that crystal. This is a very distinctive watch. It has some uh, hints of, of being an homage to a Panerai, but really it's its own watch. I like that shot right there. That smoke gray dial underneath the uh, dome sapphire. Very nice. Don't, don't be holding me, man. Keep talking. So you've got um, also a lot of versatility with this watch. You can dress this up. I think you could wear this to work. And I think you could wear this just for casual social. What a what a nice compliment uh, to the Seiko Sumo. So I mean, if you were just starting your watch collection and you wanted a sweet spot size of 44 millimeters, and you wanted two automatics that you could bond with, you really can't bond with uh, quartz watches the same as you can with automatics, as you know. Those of you who are watch idiot savants like myself. Uh, that's a that's not a bad start. Honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't recommend uh, you using uh, either as a water watch. I mean, you could use a Sumo. It's a diver. The um, the Citizen Grand Touring does not have a screw down crown. It has the guard and it does have some water resistance. But I, come on, it doesn't screw down. Do not wear that in water. Honestly, for a water watch, I would recommend uh, just get a Seiko Monster or find a Citizen Pro Master that's got a comfortable rubber strap. The, the rubber straps vary quite a bit on Citizens. Make sure you get one that's not what I call liquid rubber that just melts on your wrist and is as uncomfortable and hot as you can be. Don't get one of those. Make sure you test uh, that rubber strap before you get that Citizen Pro Master. And you can get a Pro Master, Echozilla, Seiko Monster for probably a couple hundred bucks. And, you know, wear that for your water watch. Uh, the other thing I want to say about the Grand Touring is the loom's not going to burn your eyes like the Seiko Sumo. But these really complement each other. That's not a bad start for someone who had no watches if they just started with the uh, the Sumo and the Citizen Grand Touring. Uh, not a bad start at all. So 44 millimeters, I think that's, that's a good number. And uh, until next time, I am out.